Hi, I'm Chris Martin, and we're here in our sawmill. Um, it's pretty quiet right now because I'm being filmed. Normally, it's a buzz of activity, um, lots of wood surrounding me, and in fact, over to my right is some wood with uh, purple documents on it. And uh, that indicates that that wood is FSC certified. Boy, it's over 15 years ago that, that I really got thinking about you know, the issue of this precious resource this we, that we use, these timbers, uh, some of which are rare and exotic. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen in the future if we keep cutting at the same rate and using them to make more and more guitars and more and more furniture and more and more architectural millwork and more of everything? And I got to think about Claire, my six-year-old daughter. And what I didn't want was for Claire to show up here someday with a t-shirt that said, my daddy cut down the last tree to build a guitar. Um, I'm the sixth generation. Claire will be the seventh. And regardless of how involved she is in this business, I want her to know that we took the proper steps when we became aware of the fact that these resources were getting scarce to try and conserve them and encourage everyone in the supply chain to think about replanting, regeneration, so that there's wood for future guitar builders. You know, you think back to Brazilian rosewood, I mean, it is still considered possibly the premier tone wood for backs and sides on acoustic guitars. And it was so heavily over harvested that it actually became an endangered species. The first time that we encountered an issue with Brazilian rosewood was back in the 1960s. By the late 1960s, we were being told it was going to become virtually impossible to procure Brazilian rosewood. And after some investigation, we determined that Indian rosewood would be an acceptable substitute. It looks a little different. Um, it's actually a little more stable and made a fine sounding guitar. And we've, we've used a lot of Indian rosewood since the late 1960s. In India, if you own a property with an Indian rosewood tree on it, you can't cut it down until the tree dies. But when it dies, you can call the government and they'll come in and they'll take the log from you and they'll give you a receipt. They'll take it to a depot and when they accumulate enough logs, they have an auction. And our buyer, uh, Mr. Yogi and his son and his son, three generation business, goes there, represents us and bids against other people, many of whom want to make veneer. They want to put it on a roller and make, pa make paper thin veneer. He buys these logs for us and then the proceeds, minus the government's commission, go back to the landholder. So it's it's, you know, they're, they're conscious of, of the value of these trees. Well, when Brazilian rosewood actually became CITES certified that it was not acceptable to cut or utilize rosewood after, I believe, 1993, then we realized, okay, there, there's the possibility that some of these other exotic timbers will work their way up the CITES categories to ultimately end up, you know, Brazilian rosewood's in the same category as elephant ivory and uh, tortoise shell. You know, you're just not supposed to use them. Uh, we do have a little bit of pre cites Brazilian rosewood. We use it once in a while for custom guitars. When we decided that, okay, let's look and see what woods are available 15 years ago. What woods are coming out of an environment where the, the landholder is conscious of the value of this resource? We discovered, lo and behold, here in Pennsylvania, out in the Allegheny Forest, there was, in the Allegheny Forest area, there was a family business, Cane Hardwood, and one of the, the uh, woods that they harvest is cherry. So I did a little research, and I was, I was pretty excited when I saw that in colonial times, colonial American woodworkers referred to American cherry as American mahogany because they felt it worked the same. So we got in touch with Cane Hardwood, and they said, hey, you know, this is a family business. We're multi-generational. Do you think we would cut all the trees down at once? We've actually been doing sustainable, renewable tree farming um, long before it became trendy. And we've had a relationship with them and we've introduced several models. Um, the only thing is, it's not traditional. And we run into that, boy, you know, if, if you only had a certified guitar, or if you only had an FSC uh, approved guitar that looked just like a D28 or just like a D18. And so after a lot of work, and I mean a lot of work, we finally did come up with a D18 style guitar that is FSC certified. We actually have two categories of guitars. There was a point when we, we broke away briefly from FSC. Um, initially, their criteria was 70% of the wood by weight had to come from a sustainable renewable resource. And then they raised that criteria to 100%. And we were having a difficult time 
particularly finding spruce that would meet that criteria. So we came up with our own designation so we could continue to make those models that had at least 70%. In the meantime, we found some sustainable renewable spruce and now we have, we're back to having a good relationship with FSC. The reason that there's those purple documents on the wood is that they want to verify that throughout the process, we are keeping track of that wood separate from non-certified wood. And they come in annually and they audit us. And when you come to visit, which I hope you do, as you go through the tour, you're going to see trucks of parts, trucks of, of finished guitars with purple documents. And that indicates that if an FSC auditor were to go up and say, show me where this wood came from, we look at the document, we say, here's all the paperwork, and we can trace it back to an FSC certified source. You know, I'm very fortunate here at the Martin Guitar Company. I'm surrounded by very knowledgeable, hardworking, dedicated coworkers. And someone I've worked together with for 36 years is Linda Davis Wallen. And Linda is our primary wood buyer. She knows all the vendors, she interfaces with them. Um, Linda has a very straight up attitude about buying wood. We wanna buy wood that's properly harvested and we wanna get the best wood we can at the, at the right price. And she knows so much more about sustainable forestry and FSC certification and where we're going with this that I would like to introduce her and have her spend a couple minutes giving you some much more specific details about what to me is one of the most important initiatives that this company has embraced. As Chris mentioned, I've been with the company for 36 years and my primary involvement has been with wood processing and buying over the years. We decided in the very early 1990s that we wanted to become more involved in sustainability of the species that we use for our guitars and to ensure that we would have wood for future generations of the family. So I started working on this project in the early 90s. As Chris mentioned, we became FSC certified or Forest Stewardship certified uh, in 1997. At that time, as he mentioned, the rules were that 70% of the wood by volume had to be certified wood, which worked fine for us because we couldn't find a source at that time for certified spruce for the tops and the braces, which is the sounding board of the instrument. And that was actually 30% of the instrument. Um, in, the, in about 2004, the FSC changed the rules to 100% certified wood for a product, which is very tough to do with an acoustic guitar because we have so many different species and so many different parts in the guitar that that was unachievable to us at that time. In 2005, we rejoined FSC because after 11 years, I stumbled across a source while I was at the Frankfurt trade show for European spruce that we could use for the tops and the braces for the instruments. That allowed us to come out with our first instrument that was 100% FSC certified, which was a great achievement for us after such a long project for me, particularly. Uh, we have since been able to build a guitar called the D Mahogany as one of the certified instruments that we make. And it's basically a recreation, for the most part, of a D18, but in a certified uh, platform. The only wood in that case that is not traditional would be the fingerboard and bridge, which is a wood from Mexico called Cataloche, versus you would use rosewood or ebony on a D18. So this has been a, a long quest. Um, when I look back on it, the uh, Forest Stewardship Council, first of all, is a voluntary thing throughout the world. It's a third party, independent verification that the wood has been, come from ecologically well-managed forests. And that's, that's the goal going forward, is that we're able to continue to get trees, stop the clear cutting, stop the fact that they're cut too young, and that they develop to a point that we can still use them to make these wonderful instruments. I'm surrounded by instruments that fall into the uh, certified, FSC certified or sustainable category. Um, you should come and visit us and see these guitars being made. Um, we're open Monday through Friday. We have a wonderful museum. We give factory tours. I look forward to seeing you here.